Hello and welcome to WTF History, a series where we look at some of the more interesting people and events that shaped our world. John Cunningham Lilly is a fascinating individual and a wonderful starting point for the series. He quite adequately demonstrates how amazing and simultaneously crazy our world can be. We find ourselves in the middle of the 20th century. Humanity's most recent scientific revolution was experiencing its apex as we were experimenting with new ideas, new technologies, and a new understanding of matter and life. All the while, a young John C. Lilly grows up to be inspired by the many advancements we made in the world. As such, he ignores his father's requests to become a banker and instead nurtures his vast interest in neurology and psychology. Graduating from the University of Pennsylvania in 1942 with a medical degree, he spent some time working at the university itself as well as doing military research during World War II. And it's his post-war career here that interests us most. Right off the bat, Dr. Lilly goes on to study the structure of the brain, uh, namely the most complicated object in the whole damn universe, and goes about this by sticking electrodes into the brain of living subjects just to see what's going on. With our modern eyes, this seems routine by now, but going back half a century, this was decidedly less common practice. Of course, this work is invaluable, and very important, but that doesn't make it any less bonkers. And what do you know, it gets weirder. Wanting to study the brain in a state uncompromised by external interference, Dr. Lilly straight up invents the century deprivation tank in 1953, and, in a naming system worthy of DARPA, calls it the Restricted Environmental Stimulation Tank, or REST for short. The tank itself sees individuals floating in a warm saline solution without light or sound able to penetrate the tank from the outside. He combined this with his studies of large brain mammals and attempted to use the tank in conjunction with dolphins in hopes of communicating with them. He must have made some progress with his understanding of these animals, as he was involved in the creation of the U.S. Marine Mammals Protection Act of 1972. In fact, in the 1980s, he attempted to teach these dolphins a form of computer-synthesized language in hopes of improving the communication efforts he was making. Good. Can't wait to meet him. Right this way. Jones. <laughs> It's a fish. <laughs> if only it was like this. What's more is that further in his career, Lily would enter this tank for extended periods of time while high on LSD or ketamine, feeling that it would elevate him to a higher state of consciousness. This sounds like it could be an experience very similar to the Hall of Mirrors in Warlock Armageddon. Naturally, dolphins were also involved at some point. That isn't to say that he got the dolphins high, but he certainly was. Speaking of LSD, Lilly began using it sometime in the 1960s, which happened to coincide with his interest in SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Project. What fascinated him here was consciousness, and all the ways in which it might manifest, since his own had been so expanded by his, um, experiences. Consequently, he travelled to Chile in the late 1970s to attend the teachings of Oscar Ecazo, a spiritual leader of some renown. Lilly explored meditation and his own understanding of consciousness while being trained by Ecazo, which ultimately led to his belief in the ECCO. According to Lilly, the ECCO, or Earth Coincidence Control Office, is a type of extra cosmic collection of powerful entities that function in a hierarchy which sees the ECCO at one of the lower rungs that eventually extend all the way up to the Cosmic Coincidence Control Center, or CCCC for short. These entities are a type of deity, and Lily's understanding of them is indeed rather religious, having created or divined a series of nine rules for human beings to follow while conducting their missions on Earth. It goes without saying that this construction does sound quite similar to your usual Judeo-Christian religion, and his conception of this is quite interesting in that he gained this insight almost exclusively from meditation and acid trips. On a final note, Lily came up with one more item of particular sci-fi interest, which is the solid state intelligence. The concept sees computers gaining intelligence enough to alter the environment in the similar manner to which we are capable of, and even more. And since the optimal habitat of computers is quite lethal to humans, we are ultimately forced into a conflict of terraforming. Quite a cool idea if I do say so myself. As you can see, John C. Lilly is a very interesting character, and has inspired many more, like Walter Bishop from the television series Fringe. And LSD. I love. LSD. He's had several movies made about the various aspects of his life and research, and his influence is far-reaching. Unfortunately for our brief exploration, Dr. Lilly died of heart failure on the 30th of September 2001, and so his tale ends. 
If you're at all interested, you can find a few links below the video to some of his work. But I'm sure Wikipedia will sit well with most of you just casually interested in this mad scientist. I hope you had fun, and learned something at least vaguely interesting in the process. Please leave some suggestions in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.